Hello, hello dear viewers, a very warm welcome to our channel, it's very good to have you here. In this video, we are going to have a look at the operating principle of diesel fuel injection pump. This is a plunger and barrel assembly taken out of an inline injection pump. In this video, we are going to have a look at how injection is activated, how fuel is metered. Now let's begin by discussing about the parts. When you pull it out, right here we have a barrel, and inside the barrel we have a plunger. The plunger is moving up and down inside the barrel and the barrel is simply a cylindrical part with a feed port on one side. Now, plunger is reciprocating inside this barrel. When it is moving up, it is being pushed by the camshaft. When it is coming down, it is pulled by a return spring. So that is the principle of operation. So it is reciprocating. Now the idea is, as it is reciprocating, when it is going down and passes below this feed hole, diesel fuel will be inject admitted into this chamber. So when this plunger is below the feed port, diesel under feed pump pressure will be supplied to this chamber. And when the plunger is moving up again and passes the feed port, the diesel fuel which is already admitted into this chamber will be pressurized. Further travel of the plunger will pressurize the already admitted fuel and then send it to the fuel injectors. So this is very simple illustration. Let's do it again. When it is moving down, it will open the feed port. Feed port will be open. Fuel under feed pump pressure will be admitted into this chamber. And when the plunger starts moving up, passing the feed hole, now this chamber is isolated from the feed port. Then, further travel of the plunger will pressurize the fuel that is in here. And when pressure of uh, the diesel fuel increases, it will open the delivery valve and it will go to the fuel injectors. That high pressure will open the fuel injector and fuel will be injected into the cylinders. So that is simply how it operates. So the up and down motion of the plunger will allow fuel entrance and fuel pressurization. Now when the plunger is inserted in there, let's insert it in here and see exactly how it is done. Now look, now because the plunger is below the feed port, fuel can enter into this chamber. Then look what happens when plunger is moving up. Now the feed hole has been covered by the plunger. So this fuel is isolated from here. Further travel of the plunger will inject, will pressurize the fuel that was inside the barrel. So this is how pressure is built inside the diesel injection pump. Going down, sucks fuel, moving up, will pressurize and inject fuel. This is simply how it is operated. Now, in order to control the amount of fuel to be injected into the cylinder, there is a control groove. Right here, there is a control groove. We call it, say, control helix this control groove is called the control helix and the control helix can access the upper end of this chamber by a central drilling right there there is a central drilling if you go in from here you can access the control helix now the idea is when the control helix is right in front of the feed wall when the plunger is moving up Fuel injection will be activated only when the feed port is blocked by this metal surface. But when the upper edge of this control groove uncovers the lower edge of this passage, the high pressure chamber will be connected to the feed port chamber. Then that will cause sudden pressure drop inside the high pressure chamber and that will cause the fuel injection to stop. So fuel injection will be terminated when this feed hole is uncovered by the control helix. And as you can see, when the control helix is rotated like so, because of this helical cut, because of this tapered cut, the effective stroke of the plunger will vary. Now, when the very smallest, when the shortest, when the shortest control helix, when the shortest control helix is in front of the feed hole, fuel injection will commence only for a brief moment. But when the plunger is rotated like so, now 
the longer part of the control helix will be in front of the feed hole then fuel injection will commence for longer period so injection volume can be varied by simply rotating this plunger when this tiny part when the short part is in front of the feed port fuel injection will be only for a small for a small travel and when it is rotated like so however when this longer part is in front of the feed hole fuel injection will continue for a little longer increasing injection volume into the cylinders look this is how it is done now let me insert it into the barrel let me insert the plunger in the barrel and see now for example when this tiny part when the shorter part is in front of the feed port now fuel plunger is moving up fuel plunger has passed the upper lip of the feed hole now i have moved it up now the wall of the feed port the passage of the feed port is now blocked by the plunger the high pressure chamber is isolated from this chamber so further travel of the plunger will only pressurize the fuel and make it to be injected then the plunger will continue injecting only as it injects a little as you can see there is a passage now opened see that tiny passage in there the control helix have uncovered the feed hole so the high pressure chamber now will have fuel heat leaking back to the feed port due to the pressure difference pressure in here is around three bar it is under feed pump pressure pressure in the pressure chamber when it is activated is greater than 100 bar now when this passage is uncovered by the control helix high pressure will leak to this side that will that will not be sufficient enough to overcome the spring force inside the fuel injectors and delivery valve so injection will stop now let's rotate the plunger a little to the clockwise direction now fuel injection will begin right now right now plunger is moved up fuel injection has started i will travel moving up fuel injection will continue it will continue and only now fuel injection will stop as you can see because i have turned the plunger in a clockwise direction the effective stroke the period for which fuel injection is going on has increased because now the longer part of the plunger control helix is in front of the feed port so by simply rotating the plunger you can change the fuel injection volume fuel that is going out of the barrel under high pressure will be determined by the relative position of the feed hole in relation to the control groove when assume let's say this is the feed hole when the feed hole is exactly in front of the short valve the short passage only a little while fuel will inject then injection will stop when this is turned like so however it will travel for longer period before the feed hole reaches this control helix so rotating the plunger right like this will allow fuel injection to be fuel injection to commence for longer period so rotating the plunger will vary the injection volume so when you accelerate when you depress the accelerator pedal in an inline injection pump all you are doing is rotating the plunger rotating it in this direction will increase fuel injection volume and when you let go of the accelerator pedal the spring forces will return this to the minimum fuel delivery that is idle idle position now how do we turn it off when we want to turn it off as you can see right here there is a flat surface if you see it there is a flat surface when this flat surface is exposed to the feed port the feed port will always be in continuity with the high pressure chamber when this is right here when it is like so the upward motion of the plunger will not pressurize fuel inside this chamber why because it is always in continuity this slotted surface this cut surface will always uncover the feed hole so travel of the plunger will not produce any pressure however when the injection pump plunger is rotated like so and when the feed port is no more no more open to the high pressure chamber only then fuel injection will commence so 
from the idle position, turning this plunger in this direction from the idle will expose this slanted surface to be in contact with the feed hole. So further travel of the plunger will not be producing any fuel injection. So this is how the engine is shut off. When you release the shut off lever, the spring forces again return this to the idle position. Idle position will be in such a fashion. When you shut it down, it will be like this. When you release the shut off lever, it will come to this position. That is the idle position. When you accelerate, you will be on this position. When you, load, when you let go of the accelerator pedal, you will be back to the idle position again. So this is how fuel injection volume is varied in this type of inline injection pump. Now, in order to allow the plunger to be rotated for varying the fuel delivery volume, we have a sleeve and a drive pinion assembly. The sleeve have a chamfer that is going to mesh to this driving face of the plunger. As you can see, there is a flat surface on the plunger that we call it the driving face. And a similar shape is there on this sleeve. This will be inserted in such a fashion. So when you rotate this, it will rotate the plunger. It will be inserted in here. And rotation of this control pinion, rotation of the control pinion will rotate the plunger. The plunger can reciprocate and when this is activated, it can rotate as well. So two types of motions are there. Reciprocatory motion is there. On the downward, it will suck. On upward, it will pressurize. And when accelerator pedal is depressed, this pinion will move like so, causing fuel delivery volume to vary. This is to be connected to the control rack. Right here we have a rack. This is going to activate this. So the rack, when it is moving this way and this way, it will be meshed to the teeth on this pinion. It will be meshed to the teeth and it will take the plunger to increase or decrease delivery volume of the fuel. As you can see, this control lock is for three, I mean for four, for four cylinder engine. There are four injection pumps. When we look at it on the injection pump, let's look at it on the injection pump. Right here, you can see the injection pump. Right here, you can see the different fuel delivery variations. Now, look, moving off the control rack. Right here, we have a control rack. When I move the control rack, it will cause the plunger to rotate. Right in there, you can see plungers moving. So fuel injection volume can be varied by simply moving the fuel rack. The fuel rack is connected to the pinion. The pinion is connected to the sleeve. The sleeve can drive the plunger depending on the driver's intention. So this is how fuel injection volume is varied. And as you can see, when the control rack is moving, the cylinder barrel, it should not be moving. It should be kept in place. The barrel is kept in place by doors that are going to be inserted in here. There are pins right here, right here and right here there are pins those pins prevent the barrel from rotating pins are to be inserted here there is a pin to be inserted in here when pin is inserted in here there is a pin this screw when you screw it there is a pin that is going to be inserted in this slot so the barrel will not be rotating only the Drive pinion and the plunger assembly rotates. The barrel is prevented from rotating by inserting a pin in here. When you screw in this, there are pins in here. Those pins will keep in place the barrel and prevent it from rotating. So this is how fuel injection volume is varied in an inline type injection pump. Well, dear viewers, that is all we have for you regarding fuel metering and fuel injection process in an inline injection pump. If you like this video and uh, if you like what has been presented, please smash a like button. If you are new to this channel, do consider subscribing, turn on notifications so that you will be the first to get notified whenever we come up with another video. Until then, stay safe.